today's class, you're going to want to have um, your two yoga blocks or two props and a strap. We're not going to use the foam roller today. It's just going to be more uh, basic yoga. So you have options. Um, you can sit in a comfortable seated position, definitely on your block. I highly recommend it. You can sit with one heel in towards your groin and then the other heel out in front of it. If that's not comfortable, you can sit with your knees bent, feet on the ground. Um, if you find that your hips are a little tight and your knees are like five feet in the air, place a block or a pillow, rolled up towel, anything. We don't want um, unnecessary strain to start to cause, but if your knees comfortably touch the ground, you'll start to feel a nice stretch to begin in the quads. So finding your alignment, there's imaginary string on the crown of your head pulling you up toward the ceiling. You're going to roll the shoulder blades back as if there's a pencil you don't want to move, so we're keeping it nice and engaged, retracting the shoulders. And then draw your belly button in tight towards your spine and just thinking about those three imaginary points running through your midline, lining up nice and well. When you're ready, big inhale, lift up all the way, palms meet at the top. Exhale, big press out. Three more, inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Inhale, exhale, last time, inhale, lift up nice and tall. As you exhale, begin to twist your body to the right. Your right hand will lower down like a kickstand. Left hand comes to the outside of the right leg. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twist the torso. Again, inhale, sit up. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Last time, inhale, exhale out all the way. Come on back up to neutral as you inhale. And then exhale, take it to the other side. Left hand comes behind, right hand to the outside of the left leg. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twist the belly. Again, inhale, sit up. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Last time, inhale. Exhale out all the way. Come on back up to neutral as you inhale. And then exhale, let it go. Your right hand will drop down. Left arm reaches all the way up and over, finding your side body stretch. So two important points here. Your right arm should have a soft bend in it so that your bicep is holding your body weight, not so much your wrist or your elbow. We want to use muscles, not joints and bones. And your left fingertip should be actively and intentionally reaching as far as they can. So you don't want to have like this lazy spaghetti arm. Thinking about hugging muscles to bones on the left side. And the more you reach, the more we intensify the stretch here on the left side body. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way and then inhale to sit back up. Now left hand down, right arm up and over. Same points here. You're bending the left elbow. The impact is held, your body weight is held by the bicep and you're reaching as far as you can with the right fingertips. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way and then inhale to sit back up. You're going to interlace your fingers behind your head. Start to round your upper body all the way forward. Point your elbows to your feet. When your next inhale comes, gaze will lift up past your screen toward the ceiling, arch the spine, cow pose, and then exhale, round back forward for cat pose. Inhale, open up the chest, arch the spine, cow, exhale, round back forward for cat. Two more. So we're now shifting the focus toward the upper and the thoracic spine. Last one, inhale, and then exhale, let it go. Sit up nice and tall, arms come out into a T position. Take your right arm. Cross it underneath your left, hook at the elbows, hug opposite shoulders. For some of us, this might be enough. You can absolutely stay. If you want a little bit more, you'll release your fingers, take your right fingers, wrap it around the left wrist. So now elbows and shoulders are in one straight line, belly button in tight toward the spine. Inhale, lift the elbows up, exhale, push them out. Again, inhale, lift, exhale, press. Last time, inhale, exhale, press out all the way, hold it there as you inhale again. And then exhale, let it go out to your T-shape. Other side, left arm underneath the right, cross at the elbows, hug opposite shoulders. Stay here or take your left fingertips, wrap them around the right wrist now. Same deal, elbows and shoulders in one straight line. Inhale, lift the elbows up. Exhale, push them out. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, press. Last time, inhale. Exhale, press out all the way. Hold it there as you inhale again. And exhale, let it go. Shake it off. If your legs are getting tired, feel free to readjust them. Otherwise, grab your strap. You're going to make your strap pretty wide here. And then take your pass-throughs. So depending upon how you're feeling today, you have options. If you're feeling a little tight, a little stiff, you'll want to widen your grip. If you feel pretty good, feeling flexible, you want more of a challenge, shorten your grip. Shorten the range of motion. This is a great way to reverse any hunching that happens from sitting too much. 
Also a great way to warm up the shoulders for putting on sweaters and coats. Let's go for about two more here. Good, last one. And then come on back. So now your grip will come shorter, about as wide as your knees. Arms come up into a letter Y shape. You're then going to bend your elbows behind you, create like goalpost arms, like the letter U. So form is really important here. First things first, draw your belly button in tight, line it up with the tailbone. So you don't want to be puffing the chest and arching the lower back. Your lower back should be nice and straight. Your wrists are above the elbows and elbows are lined up with your shoulders. From there, you're going to puff your chest out and draw your elbows back so that you shoulder, you retract your shoulders. So we go into that idea of shoulder um, activation like we were doing earlier. You should feel your shoulder blades almost kissing each other. So shaking here is okay, but holding your breath is not. We're here for three, two, and one. Nice job, shake it off. Last thing with the straps, straps come in your right hand. You're gonna bend your elbow Wrap your left arm around your lower back, grab the strap, and then pull the strap down. So we want to think about symmetry here, right? Your elbow, shoulder, and hip are in one straight line. And by pulling the strap with the left hand, you should feel the stretch in the right tricep. And one more inhale here. And then exhale, let it go, shake it off other side. Strap comes in the left hand. You're going to wrap the right arm around, grab the strap with the right hand, and pull down. Good, two more breaths here. One more inhale. And exhale, let that go, great. You can toss your strap off to the side. Carefully shift off of your blocks and onto hands and knees in your tabletop position. So in your tabletop, we want all 10 fingers pointed forward, shoulders above the wrists. Spread your fingers nice and wide. You're pressing in between the thumb and the index finger. Spine is flat, belly button draws in nice and actively here. Hips above the knees, tuck the toes into the mat. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your hips, gaze thumbs up to the ceiling, this is cow pose. And then exhale, push your hips forward, look in between your knees for cat. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the hips, look up, cow. And then exhale, pull in for cat. So this is the exact same thing we did seated before, moving on your own now. You're just transferring the stretch to the lower back. So we're trying to create this nice, healthy, mobile spine by the end of our time together. After the last one, come on back to a neutral tabletop. From here, rotate your wrists to either side of the mat. So depending, depending upon your wrist sensitivity, this might be enough for you. If you feel like you can handle more, find any angle between your knees that works well for you. Tuck your toes into the mat, and then start to make some circles with your hips. Kind of shifting forward, back, into either corner, and Aside from warming up the hips, you are obviously stretching out the wrists as well. Go for one more full rotation, and then switch directions. Good. One more full circle here, and then come on back to a neutral tabletop. From your tabletop, you're going to tuck your right toes to the back edge of your mat, and just start to shift your body weight forward and backward into the right leg. Next time you come back, you're going to hold it there for an extra moment, and then lift the right leg up. We want both of your hips square to the floor, so that means that your right leg shouldn't be popping out to the side. A good cue here is to think about squeezing your thighs together, like you've got a check for a million dollars there, you don't want to drop it. Flex through the foot, squeeze your butt cheek, squeeze your quad, so we're super active from the waist down. Now, belly button re-engages here, draw it into your spine, and now reach your left fingertips forward. So, bird dog, you're gonna inhale, reach forward, kick back, exhale, knee to elbow, round. Inhale, get long. Exhale, pull it in. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You're going to drop the left hand down. Right leg stays. Now tuck your right toes back to the mat and plant your right foot on the ground like we're getting for a warrior two position. So the whole right foot is on the ground. Left hand comes underneath your face. Now peel the right fingertips up for the ceiling. This is your modified side plank. Belly button draws in tight to the spine. You're actively working through the left side body here. You can shift your gaze up to the ceiling to challenge yourselves even more. And if you'd want one more stop, you can lift the right leg up. Hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Carefully let that go. Nice job. Bring your knees and your feet together. Sit back on your heels. Take a little child's pose. Let that go.
So we did the right side, now let's try the left side. Inhale, shift forward back to your tabletop. From here, tuck your left toes to the back edge of your mat and just gently rock your body weight forward and backward here. So stretching out the calf, the Achilles heel, the arch of the foot. Now you're going to lift your left leg up in the same cue, squeeze the thighs together like you've got a check for a million dollars, don't drop it. Belly button draws in tight to your spine, gaze comes out to the top of your mat and now reach your right arm forward here. Inhale, reach forward, kick back. Exhale, knee to elbow, round. Inhale, get long. Exhale, pull it in. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, inhale. And then exhale, let that go. Tuck the left toes back to the mat. Right hand comes directly underneath your face. You're going to rotate the left foot back to the floor like you're getting ready for a warrior two leg. And then inhale, reach the left fingertips up for the ceiling. So if you're feeling a little bit wobbly, keep your gaze on the ground. If you want to challenge your gaze, bring it out to the side first and then maybe up to the ceiling. And then finally, you can lift the left leg up, hold it here, really squeeze and activate through that lower body for five, four, three, two, and one. Let that go. From here, bring your knees as wide as the back, big toes together, heels slightly apart, Sit on top of your heels and then walk your body forward for an extended child's pose. So if anything we do for the remainder of class does not feel so great, child's pose is a great position to come to, to regroup, settle in, and then when you're ready, just pop right back up and join us. Inhale, come on forward to your tabletop position. Okay, so from your tabletop, we're going to use plank pose to set up for downward facing dog. Tuck your right toes back, tuck your left toes back, you're in plank. Without moving your hands or your feet, send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. So first downward dog of the day, taking a couple of adjustments here to feel a little bit better. You're pressing in between the thumb and the index finger here. That's going to keep the wrist safe. Your elbows are spinning toward the floor. Your head is framed by your arms. Your gaze is in between your feet, never at the top of the mat. That's how we keep the neck safe. There's an imaginary fish hook on your belt loop, pulling your hips up toward the ceiling. Soft bend in the knees if you need relief from the hamstrings. And your heels are hovering above the ground. Two more breaths here. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. One more inhale. As you exhale, bend your knees deeply. Gaze comes forward. Inhale, walk your feet up to your hands. Hands come to shins, flatten out the back. And then exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time, and exhale at the top. So from the top of your space, you'll want hips width distance in between your feet. That's always two fists if you ever need to measure that out. Inhale, lift up all the way, palms meet at the top, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time, and exhale at the top. Second one, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. As you exhale, lower down. This time, hold on to opposite elbows here in ragdoll position. So in your ragdoll, your arms are framing your head. Your gaze is at the wall or the mat behind you. Soft bend in the knees if you need it. And you should feel a really nice stretch on the lower back and the hamstrings. Nod your head yes. Shake it no. Wrap your hands around your waist. Give it a squeeze. Inhale, roll up to stand. Great, so come to the back of your space. From the back of your space, take a big inhale, lift up all the way, palms right at the top, and then exhale, lower down. Inhale, press your hands into your shins, flatten out the back. As you exhale, plant your hands. Now you're going to keep your feet as they are. Walk your hands forward to your plank pose, and then from your plank, hips come up and back, downward dog. Breathing here in your downward dog. Remembering those cues we went through before. And ideally, downward dog becomes your neutral place, your restful place. Stay for two more breaths. One more inhale. As you exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Inhale, walk your feet up to your hands. Hands come to shins, flatten out the back. And then exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time. And exhale at the top. We're going to come down one more time. Big inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Inhale, press your hands into your shins, flatten out your back. As you exhale, plant your hands, step back to your plank. 
from your plank, hips come up and back, downward dog. Third and final downward dog of the day, we're gonna spend most of the rest of the class on the floor. Stay for three more breaths here. So gradually, downward dog starts to feel a little bit more comfortable. Maybe you can straighten out the legs a little bit more. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, drop the knees down to the ground, uncurl the toes, hips go back to heels, forehead to the ground, child's pose. Good, hold for two more breaths here. One more inhale, and then exhale. Roll forward through to your tabletop. So we're going to need your block and your strap for the remainder of class. And block and strap are going to come to the right side. So from here, we're going to place the strap on the right foot for a little bit of lower body hamstring IT band work. Hold on to the strap with both hands, place the strap on your foot, and you're just going to relax the left leg for the top of your mat. So now holding on to the strap with both hands, you're going to inhale, start to pull your leg towards your face, and then exhale, back it off. So notice I have a little bit of a bend in my right knee, and that's because my hamstring is a little tight today, and that's a good way to keep your hamstring safe. We never want to force a hamstring stretch. Your hamstring <clears throat> is on the back of your thigh here, so that's where you should be feeling the stretch. And then from here, you can align your heel and your hip up with each other. Make some slow circles with your heel, like the size of an apple. Good, so like you're painting a circle on the ceiling. You're not moving the ankle, we're actually moving the entire leg. Now circle in the other direction, just bringing some heat to the hip joint. And then pause here. So locate your block. You're gonna to wanna to set your block up on the medium height, I'd say like a foot away from your hip. The strap will come to the right hand. The right hand's gonna hold both handles. Your left arm is free, but it's gonna rest in like a T-shape here. You're going to take your right leg, drop it all the way up to the right, and allow the block to sort of just stop you from overdoing it. Your leg should land on the block. The left side of the body is completely flat to the floor, and that's because we'll lose the significance of the stretch on the right side if we don't remain squared to the floor here. So what you should be feeling is a big stretch on the inside of your thigh or your adductor muscle. If you feel nothing, consider adjusting that block or ditching it completely. I'm okay with you dropping your right foot to the ground so long as the left side of your body doesn't start to leave the floor. And then as always, to make this even more intense, you wanna move your leg closer to your face. Curl your toes, press your heel out. So those little mini adjustments make big differences in the stretch. As always, none of this matters if you're not breathing. Take a big inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Two more breaths here. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, let it go. Now we'll use this next inhale to bring the leg back up to the middle of the body. Now pause. So the strap will come to the left hand now. We're still working the right side, and I'm just gonna move over so I don't knock into my staircase. Now your right arm drops out to a T-shape. You're gonna take your right leg all the way over to the left. So now you'll notice I have my staircase here and it's kind of convenient because it's allowing me to rest my left, my right leg without really putting too much strain on it. So if you've got a couch, you're near a wall, totally use it. If you are not near any of these convenient props but you want to make the stretch a little more intense, absolutely drop your right foot all the way to the floor. So at this point, your right hip, your right butt cheek, even the right side of your lower back comes off the ground, that's all good. It's okay for this pose. The deeper you come into this pose, the more of a stretch you'll feel on your IT band, which is on the outside of your thigh. And as always, to intensify the stretch, you're going to move your leg closer to your face. Hold for two more breaths here. And then use your next inhale to bring your right leg all the way back up. Now you're going to remove the strap, but we're still working the right side. Bend your left knee, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. So this is pigeon pose on our backs. You can absolutely stay like this if this is enough. If you want more, you're going to lift your left leg up. That's stop number two. Stop number three, you would take your right hand, interlace it through that window between your legs, take your left hand, wrap it around, and then you'll interlace both your fingers behind the left hamstring, so behind the left thigh. So what we want to do is sort of pull the left leg in toward the chest and simultaneously press the right leg away. 
and you should feel a really nice stretch on the hip and the lower back here. This is pigeon pose on your back. So side note, if you are ever in a yoga class and they do pigeon pose and um, you're not really feeling it, this is a great way to modify with the exact same benefit of the stretch in a very non-invasive way. One more inhale and then exhale, let that go. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourselves a nice big squeeze. So we finished the right side. Now we have the left side to do. From here, grab your strap. You're going to lasso the strap around the left foot now. Your right leg will relax at the top of the mat. Hold on to the strap with both hands. Soft bend in the knee if you need it. Inhale, pull your leg towards your body. And then exhale, let it go. So you're just pulling in and out here, getting that nice juicy hamstring stretch. Good. Three more breaths. So gently just rocking forward and backward. From here, you're going to line your heel and your hip up with each other as best as you're able to. And just make some slow circles with your heel, like the size of an apple. So remember, you're not really moving your ankle. You're moving your heel, which then is going to move the whole leg. We want the whole leg moving. Just bringing some heat to the hip joint. And then circle in the other direction. Good. Now from here, the strap comes in the left hand. Right arm drops out to a T-shape. Take your left leg all the way up to the left. So leg is as straight as you can possibly have it. And by the way, your block is off to the left side. You can absolutely rest your leg on the block here to just kind of help take any sort of strain out of the leg. And the closer you bring your leg to your face, the more of a stretch you'll get. So if you notice, my wall is in the way again here. So I'm not really going for the depth with my leg close to the ground. But my leg is really close to my face here, which intensifies the stretch on the adductor or the inside of your thigh. As always, the right side of your body stays glued to the floor. Hold for two more breaths here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. And then use your next inhale to bring the left leg back up. Now all you're going to do is just switch your hands. Your right hand will grab the strap. Left arm will drop out to a T-shape. Now take your left leg all the way over to the right. So I've got no wall here to block me. Now you might be able to see that my left leg goes all the way over to the right side of my mat. It touches the floor. At this point, my left hip, my left butt cheek, my lower back on the left side is all off of the ground. And that gives you a really nice stretch in the left side body. And it travels all the way up to the shoulder here. So even if your shoulder leaves the floor, that's totally fine too. Stay for two more breaths. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way and then inhale to come on back up. And then you'll release the strap. Bend the right knee, pigeon pose on the left side now. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh, make your figure four shape. This is a perfectly fine place to stay. If you want more, lift your right leg off of the ground and then interlace your fingers behind the right hamstring. So we are pulling the right leg in toward the body and then pressing the left side away. Two more breaths here. One more inhale. And then exhale, gently let that go. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourselves a nice big squeeze. Gently just rocking side to side on the lower back. And then we've got one final pose today. You're going to need your block. We're done with the strap. You're going to bend your knees, plant your feet, lift your hips up. Block is on the medium height. Take the block at the medium height and place it right underneath your tailbone. So this is supported bridge pose here. This is an absolutely perfect place to stay. If you want more um, of a back bend here, what you can do is straighten out your legs. You'll know right away if straightening out your legs is too intense for you. If you feel any sort of like pinching or sharp pains, go back to the first pose, the supported bridge pose. So our bodies have the tendency to naturally rotate inward along this like imaginary midline and manipulating our bodies into the supported bridge pose forces the body to rotate away. So if you have your toes pointed out, you're helping to facilitate that outward rotation of the hips, which opens up the lower back. So this will resolve a lot of lower back tension. You are stretching out all your abdominal organs. You're opening up the chest, clearing out the airway. And it's just an overall really, really nice stretch for the body. We're here for three more breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale, fill up. 
exhale out, one more inhale, exhale out completely. We're going to start to make our way out of this pose by bending your knees, planting your feet. Only when your feet are firmly planted on the ground, lift your hips up, remove the block, lower your hips back down, and then just hug your knees in towards your chest. So that was just a major back bend, and we hug the knees into the chest to round the lower back and counter that. Gently rock side to side on your lower back, massaging it out. And then when you're ready, your right arm will raise over your head, and you're going to roll all the way over to your right side so that your right arm becomes like a little bit of a pillow. You're just going to allow yourself a moment to adjust. And then when you're ready, use your left hand as a bit of a kickstand to gently press you back up to a comfortable seated position. And you are all done today, everybody. Thank you so much.